Now if I wanted to use this completing the square thing, how does it actually work to help us? Y equals blah, 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 blah. OK, now we know that completing the square, it mainly focuses on one number in this line. Which number is it? Which number is the most important number to completing the square? It's going to be that guy right there. Yeah, It's the one where I have to halve it and square it. Halve and square it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll stay with this. So you can see I've got, let's bring that subtraction of 7 into both sides to get rid of it on the right hand side. That gets this guy in the focus and now I will halve and square. So what's the thing I have to add to both sides? 4. That turns this into negative 3. That turns this into... and so on. You okay with that? Okay, now when you have a look at this, on the right hand side you get x minus 2 all squared. You agree with that? Okay, now this form right here is useful because it confirms what I saw up here. Do you notice? Have a look at the numbers. Look, that tells you, oh, this is where I get the minimum, and this tells you the minimum itself. But I want you to notice, if over here I write it with this 3, see this guy? I'm going to put it back over the other side, which is a bit weird, but you'll see why I'm doing it. Like so, okay? See that x minus 2 all squared? x minus 2 all squared? Because it's a square, what is the smallest value that that thing can possibly take? The smallest value, the whole thing, something squared. The smallest value that a square can take is zero, right? A square can never be negative, do you agree? At least with the numbers that we deal with, okay? So therefore, the minimum of this is zero. So the minimum of the whole thing is zero plus three. Do you see that? So really what you're telling me is that this is the number that gives me the lowest of the total because I consider it one object at a time. The smallest this guy can be is zero. The smallest this guy can be is three because he's always three. So therefore, that's the total that's the smallest. Okay? Uh, and of course, you could repeat that logic in reverse if I happen to have a concave down parabola. Okay? All right, does it make sense? Are you following? So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, all you have to do beyond this is when you're given a question, have you guys got your textbook there? Can you see it? Have a look at, um, this is AD, which is what I've written on the right hand side. Have a look at a question like, say, skip all the way across to question six. Question six. So this is on page 297 on the textbook. I don't know what it is on the PDF. Now, just read it with me. Take, take 15 seconds to actually read it to yourself. Now, the only question, uh, rather, the only skill you need to demonstrate above what I've just shown you is that all of this assumes you already have some kind of equation, like this. And then off you go. You just choose a method and you're done. Uh, if you have a look carefully at question six, you don't have, they don't provide any equation for you. You have to make it up yourself, okay? So let's actually just quickly do this together. A rectangle has a perimeter of 16 meters. I'm just gonna write down perimeter 16 meters. And what is it I'm trying to find? What is it I'm trying to maximize or minimize? The length, the length of... Oh, sorry, the area. I'm looking for the maximum area of this rectangle, yeah? So it's like, this is, um, this is your raw material that you can make the edges out of. I want you to make a really, really big rectangle in terms of area, okay? So I'm trying to maximize area, okay? So to help me, it's not necessary, but just like in circle geometry, a diagram will help, like so. They give you a bit of a hint, but they won't give you hints later on. I think they say let a side be x, that's what they say. Yeah. If this is x, then what's this side over here? X. Now that tells you what these two sides have to be, because remember what your total is going to be. I think it's going to be 8 minus x, isn't it? Have I done it right? Because when you add them all up, do you get 16? Looks good, yeah? So now I can say my area equals 
this by this. And there's your quadratic. Now, being that this is what we've just worked out, which of the three methods do you think is going to be the most suitable? I want the method that requires the least amount of work. Have I maybe already done one of these? It's, it's already written in factorized form. If it's already factorized for you, don't worry about doing anything else. You've done all the legwork. There's a root at 0, a root at 8. So now you know where the maximum will occur. It will be at x equals halfway between, which is 4. Which, by the way, will give you what kind of rectangle? Which is not a coincidence. Okay. 